So I will hand it over to Lewis, our, our lead architect, and he can kind of give us a, an overview. Uh, yeah, thanks everybody. And hello from snowy and cold Berlin. Um, <clears throat> so uh, first of all, uh, some uh, of the principles we're uh, using to guide our work. Uh, all the code is uh, open source. All the code we write is released under GPL3. We are aiming at availability, regardless of what happens to involved entities uh, <coughs> using the, um, uh, so distribution. We are aiming at ed anybody could add resources to the network permissionlessly. Um, we um, seek that implementers can replace and recombine components as they see fit. We wish to push processing and sense making of uh, content on the network to the edges. And uh, we wish to stay independent in the sense that we write most of our code from scratch and keep our dependency graph very lean. In general, we try to think of this as creating a public utility rather than creating a platform. On the right side uh, is a screenshot of our GitLab repo. We are adopting a microservices approach here, and each of the components have uh, their own individual repo slide. So our system is basically an two parts, a custodial part and a sovereign part. Sovereign meaning that you're in charge of your own private keys, custody, custodial meaning that we handle the keys for you. Uh, our short-term efforts have been to implement a new and improved system for the some 40,000 users that are currently trading on the system using USSD on feature phones. And uh, the custodial wallet manager that we're developing is a collection of asynchronous services that handle interactions with the consensus network uh, basically, that means it does whatever a human being needs to do with a sovereign wallet that is uh, sign and send transactions, monitor results of transactions, resend or retry transactions that for some reason didn't go through, or react to the results of transactions um, and uh, perhaps issue new transactions as a consequence of them. Um, the amount of data that we keep in custody to perform these actions is conscientiously kept on a, to a minimum. And all other data and metadata <coughs> is kept in decentralized storage, which is equally accessible across custodial or sovereign uh, uh, system. Uh, data here meaning typically user profile data, KYC document, graph proofs, uh, token descriptions, media assets, and so forth. The back end, of course, uh, is the blockchain. Um, all that's needed to discover and, and, and connect to all the resources in the network is a single uh, address on the blockchain. Uh, this, among the services provided, there's discoverability uh, services that enable you to make sense of addresses and resources on the network. And also, of course, the core thing, create and transfer tokens of value and connect, uh, convert tokens between each other um, uh, permissionlessly. Our blockchain of choice uh, for the prototype is a Byzantine EVM run by a consortium of universities across the world called Blacksburg, and they're also giving us the gas uh, to run the custodial wallet manager system. Slide, please, well. <coughs> uh, some other key features that we're targeting in the work is uh, for everyone to be able to build trust in the network and decide who to trust for information as well. We are targeting interoperability between consensus engines or even types, that meaning, for example, across Bitcoin and Ethereum, etc. Um, we are seeking local first metadata edits using conflict-free uh, replicated data types and also a P2P layer so that applications can give each other chatter about what's going on in the network. Slide, please. Well, so there's a lot of code involved here, uh, and I'm happy to go through the code at your uh, uh, leisure. But some entry uh, entry points could be the CIC Ether, the custodial wallet system, API, which is what the USSD component uses to inject uh, uh, blockchain requests into the custodial wallet manager. And also the CIC contracts repository, which defines uh, the interfaces that smart contracts have to implement on the system, notably the registry contract, which is where you find the contracts of the network, and also the address proprietor, and with which addresses can describe other addresses using an arbitrary number of cryptographic proofs. I'll hand it then over to Philip, who will go through the USSD part of the system. Uh, hi guys, my name is Philip, uh, developer based in Nairobi. I'll be taking you through the CIC USSD component. And this part of the system essentially acts as an entry point for users to interact with the CIC platform. It structurally consists of three major parts. 
there is a server agent, which is a WSGI application that handles HTTP requests and essentially offers an avenue with which the USSP uh, service provider can interact with us. Then we have a synergy worker, which is essentially a text implementation that is internally executes work that we hand it over off of the HTTP request response lifecycle. And finally, finally, we have a state machine, which maintains um, the set of states that describe the behavior of the USSP menu, depending on different inputs that it receives. Uh, next slide, please. Um, with the aforementioned USSP menus, uh, users can perform different actions. Uh, essentially, this can be broken down into sending tokens and managing their accounts. Um, the menu is, uh, offers them the, the ability to perform actions such as managing their pins, um, requesting mini statements for transactions, changing the language they prefer to see the menu in, um, among others. Uh, next slide, please. Um, some notable capabilities of the application uh, would be uh, callback handling, which entails the leveraging of a set of predefined tasks that the application uses to process data which we receive over the callbacks I have mentioned uh, on the task queue from different components like uh, CICE. Uh, this is essential for operations such as account creation where callback data is used to tie accounts uh, to addresses to phone numbers, making it possible for users to access the blockchain over USSD. Uh, another key feature would be event notification. Um, the CIC USSD component is able to issue users with notifications on events that happen on the, on the platform and also on the blockchain, for instance, reception of funds into the account. Uh, we achieve this by creating notification tasks and the respective task queues uh, of an API interface. And the really cool thing about this implementation is that it, it's super pluggable and we can send notifications over any chat gateway supported by the notifier component. Uh, and finally, we have uh, some optimizations we've done. Um, now, USSD sessions have relatively short lifespans of about 180 seconds uh, for Kenyan telcos. And timeouts are fairly common. They could occur for, for uh, if the system registers idle times as low as 30 seconds. Uh, this can be a problem for systems such as ours, which are communicating with the USSD service provider over HTTP. So to get around this, we, were, uh, we implemented a session management strategy where USSD sessions are cached in memory for higher availability. And subsequently, we are synchronously persist them to disk when the round trip to the USSD service provider is completed. Uh, thank you for your time. I'll pass it uh, on to Spencer. Hey, I'm Spencer, a developer based in Nairobi. So I'll be taking you through the CIC admin dashboard. This is the administration web app that enables the staff or humanitarian teams to be able to interact with the user activity and also to provide user support to users whenever they experience any issues. Next slide. So we have some a number of components in the CIC administration dashboard. This includes the dashboard, which is the data visualization that provides information coming directly from the blockchain network. Then we also have the accounts component. This allows us to be able to view and manage all user accounts on the network. It also provides assistance to users on the setup of the accounts and profile information. Then next we have the transactions component. This enables us to be able to keep track of all transactions that occur on the network in a nearly real-time basis. Then we have the tokens component and uh, this allows for the viewing of information on all tokens in the network. Yeah, so that has been it from us. Yeah, I'll give it back to you guys. Thank you guys very much. Um, I, you know, that was a, the, the shortest overview we could make. There's a lot more to talk about, 